Smart City Navigators, a podcast about innovation, sustainability, and new technologies on the market. This podcast is brought to you by Navi Parking. Michael Napora, Master of Engineering in Mining and Geology, currently is the junior software developer in Navi Parking Technology with over a year of experience in commercial software development using Flutter framework. His previous work experience helped him with develop organizational skills, discipline, and decisiveness. For almost three years has been intensely practicing yoga in both physical and mental aspects. Massagist and yoga teacher in training with personal focus on holistic well-being, where things like sleep, breathing, diet, strong yet flexible body and psychology are merely aspects of one thing. Let's welcome Michael Napora in today's episode of Smart City Navigators podcast. Hello, Michal. Hello, Michal. <laughs> or I should say, hello, Michael. As you prefer. Welcome to Smart City Navigators podcast. How are you today? I'm good, thanks. And thanks for having me here. It will be an interesting time for sure. Our today's topic is mindfulness, because mindfulness is very well connected with um, with stress relief, with being present. So the first question is how to be present and how to be more aware in a very fast world we live in right now. We are basically surrounded by many, um, many conveniences that allow us to live um, easier, let's say. Uh, we have, we might, for example, um, order food either um, by just u- using our phone or we can uh, order some box diet. We have uh, huge access to um, uh, transportation that is highly digitalized. We have many taxi-like ab- applications. We have uh, public transportation that we can also buy tickets in our applications. And there are many IoT uh, solutions, for example, to uh, turn on the street lights when the, when it's dark. Um, there will be for sure a uh, very huge increase in autonomous cars soon. So we are basically, as I said before, surrounded by those things. And I would say that they are not neither uh, good or bad. They are convenient. And because it's easy, it's very important to uh, think about how do we use them. Uh, And that is where mindfulness comes in. Because if you are aware of how do you use it, uh, basically anything, and how it affects you, then you can either uh, do it more or less. Because of course it it can be beneficial or or quite the opposite. Right here, I would like to mention that we have our beautiful NaviPay application, uh, which basically allows you to find a parking uh, spot in a city and pay for it using your phone, which has many benefits. You you are not stressed uh, of looking for a parking spot in a huge agglomeration. You uh, can pay it via phone, so you have no contact with uh, you might have not no contact with the staff and also you save your time because you don't circle around uh, the city generating co2 so it's also beneficial to uh, environment hmm. so how it connects with awareness with being aware perfect way to increase your awareness uh, is to practice mindfulness meditation which is our main topic i would say for hmm. today okay so we speak about being present and being aware. So what is awareness? I might here just propose a dictionary definition, uh, which is very accurate, I would say. Uh, And in this definition, awareness is knowledge or perception of a situation or a fact. So you are aware when you know or perceive something as it is. And mindfulness is basically being in the moment and having observations which is very crucial because the word observations is crucial. We have uh, observations and not judgments. For example, if I would say that man uh, speaks very loudly, then uh, speaks is uh, an observation because we know for a fact that this man is speaking. But when we add loudly, that is judgment because 
Um, the, it is how we perceive how that person speaks. Maybe in his culture or his uh, home environment where he grew up, uh, it was normal just to say, speak loudly. So why being observer is very important to people's awareness? Hmm, I would say that is, it is important because uh, we tend to have a very low levels of awareness. Um, and we don't even recognize it as, uh, as such. Um, if you would ask someone uh, if he is aware uh, at the moment, the best example I- that almost everyone of us can relate to is uh, driving a car. Uh, and especially when it's a route that we travel often and we know it well. Uh, if you would ask anyone if uh, he or she is uh, aware during uh, driving to work or for example going back they would say yes of course I'm aware I'm perfectly aware of where I'm driving of what I'm doing Um, what do you mean (laughs) and that is not true and when it comes to driving uh, it is literally driving on autopilot because we are not in the moment, we are not uh, focused on what we are doing, right, uh, f- on the sensations that we uh, have during the drive, but we have basically two choices. Our main two patterns are that we either uh, live in the future, just thinking of plans or of what we will do, uh, some checklists, some uh, shopping lists or whatever we tend to, uh, we, we want to do in the future or we live in the past, reliving our past experiences. And that is not awareness. Hmm. So awareness lays somewhere between past and the future, right? You can say that it is between the future and the past, but it's easier just to say awareness is now. Okay, Michal, so why is it important to find maybe uh, 10 or 15 minutes every single day to practice mindfulness? When you ask this question, uh, first thing that comes into my mind is a Buddhist metaphor of uh, how our mind works. So just imagine uh, a jungle. And in this jungle, imagine a monkey, normal monkey that jumps from the uh, tree to tree and nothing special about it, right? Now, imagine that this monkey is crazy. No offense, but it's not just the normal monkey. It affects very strange. It's, it's very active, uh, overactive maybe. And now imagine that even worse, this monkey is drunk. So we have wild, uh, wild, insane and drunk monkey that is uh, going crazy in the jungle. But that's not all. Imagine that it was bitten by a a scorpion or bee or anything else and it's monkey that is wild, uh, drunk, insane and stung. Just imagine how chaotic actions this monkey does. And imagine that this is perfect metaphor for your mind. Untrained mind, we, we, we might say. And uh, do you think that it's, it would be a good idea to make life decisions from that place? I think it's too much chaos. That was just a metaphor. And uh, meditation, just meditation, not mindfulness meditation right now, has many benefits, um, of which I would say that most important is uh, that it reduces stress. It is proven that it builds up your prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for Uh, your ability to focus and allows you also to uh, take a look at your problems and challenges uh, from a different angle, from different perspective. It allows you to see it and process uh, the situation you are in. There are also some um, other benefits. We might also say that whatever uh, people do, they do it to decrease their suffering. You're familiar with this idea? Yes, of course. I think everybody is familiar with this idea. There are also cases um, that we can use awareness to decrease our our suffering. For example, uh, we might uh, have a situation where someone said something. That's the situation. 
and we feel a uh, rise of an anger, for example. Uh, we uh, typically tend to join this feeling of anger to the situation that someone said something, but that is not true. That is, the uh, situation is that uh, someone said something and we ourselves uh, create this emotion, this anger, which then we uh, tend to act upon and it creates uh, more of our suffering. We often also feel uh, emotion in the body. For example, I feel uh, anger much in my chest while fear in my uh, um, abdomen. And that is also an interesting observation because it then creates uh, tension in the body as awareness allows you to notice them, those tensions, you are then you have then the possibility to relax them. There is also an interesting concept of um, just uh, opening up to emotion. When uh, you feel an emotion and you feel that you feel it somewhere in the body, you feel those tensions. You then try to not to create any resistance to it, but just to uh, open to this emotion, to feel it more. You mean to allow the yes. emotions yes, 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 to yes. just flow through your body and then this this kind of flow will let go those emotions, right? Exactly. It's hard emotionally <laughs> because we tend to do otherwise. We tend to uh, close ourselves in, we tend to ten tension a lot or we tend to distract ourselves with something else and uh, not to feel the emotion and this is quite uh, on the opposite side. Okay, so you said about emotions, how to let them go and how to just live as a present human being, right? So how to be more present? Is there any like specific exercise to do that? So when it comes to uh, starting the meditation, you have to be aware, aware <laughs> that there will be no instant effects. You have to create a habit of it and it gives most benefits after a longer period of time. So to create a habit, I would recommend to uh, make yourself do the 30 day challenge and to um, do it every day for those 30 days. It's also very important to say that uh, you don't have to do anything else but to meditate. Uh, we as a people tend to overcomplicate things. I will not start because I have no yoga mat. I will not start because I have no meditation pillow. I have to read a book or go to the seminar or uh, ask that guru to teach me how to do it. And when it comes to meditation, no. <laughs> you just need uh, some simple stuff, some simple knowledge and then just do it. There is other thing that when you start the practice and there is that image that we tend to have in our minds that oh i'm meditating i have to be completely still i have i have to have no no thoughts uh, like some zen master no <laughs> you will not start at this thing because it is hard it is uh, it is unnatural for your mind to do so so throw that expectation out of your head because it will not look like this um, when it comes to meditation, it's important to just do it. <coughs> you, it's, the intention is important. Uh, and if you try to meditate and you think for almost all the time about other stuff, you get carried away by your, your thoughts, it's okay. Just accept that and uh, it will most probably be different on the next session. And the last thing I would say, it is important to see value in it. Uh, if you, uh, you might think that, whoa, I don't have 20 minutes to sit every day and do nothing. <laughs> Many people would, would probably say so. Uh, but when you see value, uh, it might different your approach. And we've spoken just a second before about benefits. So I hope that they uh, motivated you to or the listeners <laughs> uh, to start meditation habit. I remember uh, there was a one case that I assumed that my meditation is supposed to be 10 minutes. And let's say someone interrupted me after five minutes. And after those five minutes, I was like, 
I need to meditate for five more minutes, right? But after uh, right now years of practice, I know that five minutes is enough for that day, right? Or for a morning practice. And it's okay to just finish the meditation after five minutes. It's okay. It might be. If you feel like you would like to continue meditation, there's nothing wrong about it. I would say that the best thing that, no, not maybe not the best, but good thing uh, about meditation is that you uh, become aware that you are not in, in control of your thoughts. They just come in and come out. Uh, oh, there is also a nice metaphor. And this metaphor says that you would watch your breath like you would gaze into the sky. And any thought, you would uh, take it as a cloud that temporarily blocks your, uh, your seeing of the sky. And then it just moves over and uh, you come back to your meditation. Hmm. I also have uh, one example. Uh, one time I was visualizing the meditation uh, in particular, uh, let's say, uh, environment where I was on the, uh, on the beach and I was observing the boat, which was you know, just moving, passing by, and every single boat was one thought. Like one thought was one boat, then it just drift away. And then another boat, another boat. And it was very like a uh, mindful experience because I was just observing and labeling my emotions, which were the, let's say, passengers of the boats, right? And the boats was just passing. And this example, uh, this practice of vis visualization is very uh, clear and it's very useful for uh, mindful mindfulness. Yes, I like it. I might use it. <laughs> Disclaimer, I might use this meditation. Feel free. Just maybe one more thing. Because we speak about meditation, about awareness, being mindful and uh, all those things. Uh, we have to remember that we are only people. We do make mistakes and I'm no uh, enlightened being. I'm no guru. Uh, I ju I'm just meditation practitioner. Uh, and I'm also not perfect and no one else is also perfect. So it's, you will have in your meditation practice some ups and downs and it's normal. Mm. And we, are, we should just accept that. So as a, working as a developer at, at startup here at Navi Parking, how do you feel how mindfulness meditation helps you out? It helps in situations that we talk about. It helps in relation with other co co-workers. Uh, it uh, helps in uh, releasing stress from my body. Awareness also uh, might increase your productivity. You might uh, notice some things that you would omit otherwise. And that's also a possibility. Nice. Okay, Michal, uh, we have a very nice episode about mindfulness meditation. So, um, any final words from you? Well, thanks for having me. I hope you will start meditation. I highly recommend it. And see you in other epi episodes. See you at the next episode of a Smart City Navigators podcast. Thank you for listening to Smart City Navigators podcast. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Join the conversation by leaving a comment and sharing your thoughts. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode in which we'll do another deep dive into a topic related to innovation, sustainability and new technologies. See you next time.